YouTube. This is a video on the topic of Alan Wake 2, a recently released video game, and whether it's woke. Uh, this topic has been coming up a little bit in video game journalism, uh, much more in popular discussion of the game. I think it's a great game. It's a game that I enjoyed a lot, has great music. It's not really a gameplay focused game. Um, but I am somebody who is uh, sensitive to concerns of wokeness, and so I thought that uh, I would go into it, and I want to disclose my uh, any possible biases that I might have up front, uh, but I'm hoping that I'll explain what I mean uh, enough when exploring the topic that you can see where I'm coming from, and hopefully you won't feel that I'm just uh, deciding a certain way because uh, I'm either uh, pretty much against wokeness or that I uh, really like Ellen Wake too. But the quick answer is mostly not. Um, I get the, uh, the concerns about how wokeness is damaging our culture. I'm on board with common critiques of woke tropes, but we should also be fair about whether they apply. Um, before we start, I, I'll note that I'm focusing on the game uh, contents and not interviews or anything else because I really haven't been following the interviews even close to uh, in even close to an exhaustive way. I have played all the way through Alan Wake 2 uh, twice if you count the final cut. So let's go into specific uh, parts of why some people critique it as being woke. One thing people keep bringing up is the character of Saga Anderson and race swapping. The problematic trope here is that in order to get greater representation, some game makers will swap the race of existing characters in a lazy way to get that representation. I don't value representation at all. I also find the, uh, this particular practice to be highly irritating. Sometimes they do an even more annoying thing in superhero genres by making a superhero identity some kind of a job that gets passed along as an example that's somewhat cringe, uh, Spider-Man, uh, and one that is very cringe was the passing on of the role of Thor to somebody. Let's, let's make it a woman uh, because we need to have more women in comics. Let's make Spider-Man black because we need to have more black people in comics. Uh, the better way really to handle that trope is to make new characters and see if we can do a good job, see if they catch on. Um, does this apply to Saga Anderson? The first time we saw her was in an Easter egg in Quantum Break, where she was of uh, maybe purely Scandinavian ethnicity, but I think this doesn't count. We never really met the character, it was a brief cameo, it was an Easter egg, and uh, it was really a long time before the, the game was in production, so it's routine for things like that to be seriously reworked, because it's not really a serious showing, so I'm calling this critique at most a stretch if you're going to apply Talon Wake 2. It's just she never really was established as a character. So I, I don't consider it race swapping because it, we can't take that representation in the uh, of Saga Anderson seriously. More broadly, I think Saga's having some African American and some Scandinavian ethnicity actually worked out really well in the plot. They wanted to tie her to two lineages with unusual powers uh, to justify her powers, namely the Door slash Hatch family, uh, which maybe can move between dimensions or realities, and the Anderson family, which are uh, Scandinavian seers. And this was a way to do that. So it had a story reason uh, that wasn't just pure mindless uh, representation. Uh, it was of a character that never really was uh, fully portrayed in any sense. I mean, we, we could contra uh, contrast this with a few more examples, like there's Domino and Deadpool, which was a more clear example of, uh, of race uh, swapping, um, but, uh, but not here. And uh, in the case of the Deadpool movies, uh, although I was mildly annoyed by, by it, um, uh, the character that they made her in the film was so awesome that I think I'm willing to accept it if it's sufficiently awesome, but just most of the time it isn't. But Saucy Beats just did such a great job with that character and they made the character so interesting. 
um, I'm willing to overlook it. I wouldn't say it's, it's an okay practice in general, and again, I just don't value representation, but, uh, but th that really wasn't the case of Saga, with Saga Anderson at all. Let's look at a possible complaint of another annoying trope, where a lot of media made to appeal to younger people is desperate for any existing series with a well-established character to hand off that stardom uh, if the star isn't diverse enough or is just too old or something to someone who, who is, who needs to humiliate the existing person along the way. And we've seen this with Indiana Jones, Doctor Who, Willow, and a number of other um, characters. It's another just highly, highly annoying trope, uh, tropes. And in general, in my view, we should just write any of those efforts off as non-canon. Uh, keep the old continu uh, continuity, find a good cutoff point, and just ignore the recent work. So is it weird to have an Alan Wake video game suddenly having Wake be sharing stardom with someone else? I think for this, we just don't have enough information about whether there was that intent. And a lot of it depends on what Remedy does with the series moving forward. If Saga is a new permanent co-star to Wake, there's a reasonable complaint here. If not, I think it's probably fine. Um, uh, it would be weird for Wake to be edged out of uh, his own game, um, but for one game in a series, there's just enough to, uh, not enough data to know if that's what's going on here. And I think the story is actually stronger for investigating the consequences uh, more deeply of Wake's pulling people in through his stories, which has just been uh, hinted at as a topic in prior games. And having a co-star to really drive the point home and provide some gameplay variation works pretty well. It also pushes the game back more into an exploring its, uh, itself uh, mode, which works well for a series that's been dormant for, what was it, like 10 years? It's been a long time uh, since the earlier Alan Wake games and very few, uh, at least there will be hopefully a lot of gamers who didn't play them who are hopping into Alan Wake too. And so making sure that they hop back and they're not only trying to appeal to established fans is kind of important for games that had that long of a hiatus. I mean, it's different for series like Doom where there never was anything to the character of Doom Guy. He never even had a name uh, before, or if he did, that's not one I remember. Um, but I, I think it, it, it is okay for now. We'll just have to see what they do in the future. Some people criticize FBC Agent Estevez. I think she's a pretty cool character. They did toss uh, in her being non-straight. Did they need to do that? No. Did, they, did it bug me much? Not really. I'm not straight myself, although I don't get any particular thrill from representation. Again, I find it unimportant. Um, I think there's maybe a small complaint here uh, for people more sensitive than me on the topic but it really is no big deal. And the US in modern times has a uh, some percentage of people who are um, out as uh, bisexual or gay. We're not super rare. Um, it's not like they're aiming to ha have like 30% representation or something. It's one person, um, it's one reference. Uh, I, I don't think it's bizarre to have uh, one person turn up. Um, if, but it is easy to overdo this but uh, I, I don't think this goes uh, far in that direction. And I guess the other bit I can imagine people grumbling about is Saga's race complaint during her near breakdown late in the game, she, when she grumbled about, I think, uh, some white asshole deciding things for her life. I don't think the game was really trying to work out anger by the authors on that or appeal to, um, or appeal to uh, activists or anything like that. I think generally when people are in a really bad place, they lash out. It's a way that people do it. Uh, Saga was going through a rough time at that point in the game, and it's just a normal anger response for people in that kind of uh, space. Um, so I, I, I'm not bothered uh, by, uh, by that. The game otherwise doesn't seem to touch much on politics or uh, spicy cultural issues, at least nothing I can think of. So just in general, I think it's mostly not. And maybe if, if the series changes moving forward, uh, then we might see things that, uh, that build on s small things mentioned here. But I, uh, 
I doubt that it will. Um, might be wrong, but uh, I, I didn't. I do tend to be bothered by a lot of woke media, and there are other tropes uh, that come up and things me mainly meant to appeal to that crowd. Uh, where I've given up on series when they get a little too uh, annoying in that respect. But Alan Wake 2 just didn't set off for me any of those concerns. I, I don't think it's a, uh, it's a woke game. Um, so those are my thoughts. Uh, if you have other thoughts, uh, you can leave them on uh, here. If you don't think uh, I'm being fair with my analyses of these particular critiques uh, because I like the game or because of my particulars, can chat about it um just uh to try and keep it civil but um but yeah it's, it, it's not something that uh it's not a game that struck me as being uh woke anyhow those are my thoughts ciao